Hello. 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 It's week two of Creation Staycation. See ya. Here's what we've got for you today. You're going to be here in a minute with our weekly Bible verse. Julia will be joining us with another animal of the week. Do you see many squirrels? No. We'll see what happened when Julia went on a bug hunt. And as ever, there's music with me. All that coming up soon. Shine my light all around Feeling good, feeling down Bouncing with joy, flat to the ground Gonna shine my light all around And there isn't anybody gonna put it down Gonna shine my light all around Gonna shine my light all around Feeling good, feeling down Bouncing with joy, flat to the ground Gonna shine my light all around And there isn't anybody gonna put it out Gonna shine my light all around It was God who said Let there be light I made the rainbow Color the sky It was Jesus who said I am the light Let him shine in you A flame that will never die I'm gonna shine my light all around Feeling good Feeling down, bouncing with joy, flat to the ground, gonna shine my light all around, and there isn't anybody gonna put it out, gonna shine my light all around. It was God who said, Let there be lights. I made the rainbow color the sky. It was Jesus who said, I am the light. Let him shine in you A flame that will never die I'm gonna shine my light all around Feeling good, feeling down Bouncing with joy, flat to the ground I'm gonna shine my light all around And there isn't anybody gonna put it out I'm Gonna shine my light all around Into dark corners gonna shine my light 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 And there isn't anybody gonna put it out Gonna shine my light all around Gonna shine my light all around Feeling good, feeling down Bouncing with joy, flat to the ground Gonna shine my light all around And there isn't anybody gonna put it out Gonna shine my light all around, I'm gonna shine my light. 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 All around. This week's Bible verse comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 34. And
And it says this, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. Matthew chapter 13, verse 34, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. So last week we thought about how God's creation is good even around where we live. This week we're going to be thinking about how God looked at everything he had made and saw that it was good. But wait, what? Even slugs? Ugh. Yes, this week we're going to be thinking about all those things you find in creation that are a bit funny looking or a little bit slimy or that maybe even a little bit creep you out or make you feel afraid. The things you look at and think, how could anyone say that's good? You know, a bit like little brothers. One of the really important things for us to learn so that we can work with God and make the world more how he wants it to be is to see things through his eyes. And that means seeing the wonder and the value in everything he has made, even when it's really hard. So this week, we have a whole host of videos and activities and challenges focusing on the bits of creation that make us go, what is that? Why would anyone make green fly? What is the point of a woodlouse? Yes, we want you to research bugs. Build bug hotels, go on bug hunts, and it doesn't just stop at bugs. While we're thinking about funny looking creatures, weird creatures, slimy, disgusting, scary, creepy crawly creatures, don't forget that there is also stuff like the blob fish, the dumbo octopus, the naked mole rat, Go on, check them out. See just what they're like. Animal of the week, animal of the week. Does it roar, does it squeak, animal of the week. Hello and welcome to animal of the week. That time where we joyfully learn lots of very relevant information about our chosen animal for that week. So today we are looking at an animal that in fact does not roar or squeak because our theme for Holiday Club this week is God looked at the world and saw that it was good. But wait, what? Even slugs? And so we are going to look at an animal that is often shunned and not appreciated, the lowly slug. And we today are going to celebrate its weird and wonderful brilliance. Let me find my presentation. If you're wondering what kind of a noise a slug does make, is very similar to a mermaid. Okay, animal of the week. The slug. Before we begin, I should tell you that I actually love slugs. I am very fond of them. And I hope that once I have shared my top 10 facts about slugs, you will have all the information you need to start loving them too. First up, slugs have 27,000 teeth. That is a lot of teeth. It is in fact more than a shark. How many teeth does a shark have? I hear you cry. I'll tell you how many, less than 27,000. Next, slugs have green blood. It's cool, isn't it? Quirky, why? You know, it's cool. Slugs can stretch 20 times their length and this helps them wiggle through tricky holes to find the best leaves. It also makes them very similar to Elastigirl from The Incredibles which is an excellent role model for anyone, I think. Next. <gasps> the slug slime subsection. The best part of any Monday. Our next three slug facts are all about slug slime. Enjoy the slug slime subsection. Slug slime helps slugs glide gracefully along on their stomachs. And here is a picture. Oh, I have accidentally put in a picture of a swan because they're so easily confused with a slug because they're both so elegant and graceful. Next, 
Each slug slime is as unique as a fingerprint, which is pretty amazing. Being able to recognise their own slime trails helps them find their way to and from shelter and tasty patches of vegetation, which are excellent things to be able to find. Well done to the slugs. They're smart, aren't they? They're quite intelligent. Slug slime is very absorbent. So that's why if you get slug slime on your hands, water makes it even, even more sticky because it makes it more effective. Its stickiness of the slug slime enables slugs to climb vertical walls. And pictured, we have a very daring slug hanging upside down off a wall to munch on some grass beneath him. I can't remember the last time I hung vertically off a wall to eat my tea. And for that, I applaud the slug. So ends our slug slime subsection. It's good though, wasn't it? Slugs help. Oh, this one is very scientific. Slugs help with rapid decomposition by eating plants and returning nutrients to the soil. Basically, they eat leaves and then they poop. And then there's nutrients go back into the soil. And this slug, you can see, is looking up because he's all pleased and proud that we've noticed how important he is. No. Slugs have colourful cousins. The California banana slug, which is an excellent name, is usually bright yellow and can grow up to 25 centimetres long, which is unnecessarily large for a slug, and I love it. Next. Play slugs. <laughs> sea slugs are also excellent. Look at all of these. Ooh, ah, wow. It's like a firework display, except with slugs. The best kind of firework display. Next. This is the last fact. You should never pick up and kiss a slug, even if you've heard it might be good luck. And this is because slug slime is very absorbent. So if you have sweaty or dirty hands, apparently it might be bad for the slug. Don't go dirty in the slugs, or oh, slugs. We wouldn't want to harm them. Okay, and that is all of our facts about slugs. For now. So I hope that from that, you have learnt a newfound respect and love for slugs, just like I have. And maybe you can um, go out and enjoy like spotting them and looking for them and let us know so that we can add it to our live list of wonders that you see. Okay, have fun. So one of the challenges this week is to go for a walk and see what wonderful tiny creatures we can find. So that's what I'm going to do now. I have my trusty assistant with me because I'm not very good with creepy crawly things. So say hello, Kaylee. Hi. There she is. You didn't see her, but she's there. I can see her. Uh, let's see what we can find. We're just heading up onto the bank, which should be a good place for bugs because there's lots of overgrown plants. But it can be hard to spot them because they're so small. So if you're looking for tiny things, you need to look small. With my love. So we've just come into the woods, there they are, and no bugs yet, but I can hear lots of birds all around me. And also we found, wait and have a look, somebody's den. Walk in his love. I'm gonna walk in his so we just life. had a look under this rock, lifting up rocks mm. when you're out is a great place to look as long as you put them back again when you've finished, and we found a little beetle. There he is, having a run on Kaylee's hands. Just looking under another rock and we think this is some kind of millipede. So rocks, if you're not too squeamish about getting up close to bugs, rocks are a great place to look. Beetle number two. Lots of wood life. What is the point of a wood louse? 
there is a moth of some kind on a leaf with beautiful orange colours in its wings. You can see its little legs, its antenna, just a little bit of its furry body there, sticking up its head. Look, just there, on the underside of this stone, a tiny weeny slug. Look at that. So one of the things about looking for bugs is that you have to do that thing John was talking about where you look very hard and very long. So it's about being still and really looking with your eyes. It's a snail hidden in the leaves. Whitetail bumblebee. Lovely, very beautiful. It's not a bug, but it is an animal of the week. Animal of the week, animal of the week, animal of the week, animal of the week. So, water is a great place to try and spot some insects, especially still water like a pond, but make sure that you come with a grown up to keep yourself safe. Let's see what we can see. Don't know if you can see, but there are lots of little bugs there just in the middle of the water perched on top of the weed. Now, Kaylee loves disgusting things, so she has pulled some weed out of the pond. You can see there is something very strange looking creeping along on it just there with lots of legs. Not sure what that is, but it's definitely weird and wonderful. <laughs> Kaylee's also found this water snail in the pond on some of the weed which is very small and probably a little bit slimy I think this one is my favourite of all the bugs is the ladybird so pretty You're with me. I can hear you calling my name. so that is how we got on on our bug walk Hopefully it's inspired you. I know we found lots of weird and wonderful things. Hopefully you'll be inspired to go out and see what you can find too. Don't forget, there are lots of ideas, challenges and treasure hunts available in this week's activity pack. So if you're not already signed up to receive that by email, visit the link and do it now. And don't forget to send us what you've been up to. We want to see your drawings, photographs, poems, stories, crafts, whatever you've been doing to join in with Creation Staycation, send it to us at office at zephaniah.org.uk or tag us on social media. Victory for the Lord, 
your God is with you. So, this week, our challenge to you is... Find God in the weird and wonderful things around you, wherever you are. Because even when we're looking at the things we don't understand the point of, God looks at them and says, That's good. Show to